Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things and the tiniest nerdiest thing I've made recently is this awesome Lord of the Rings Mount Doom book nook. So the very first thing I like to do when it comes to making a book nook is I like to, well I like to build the frame because the frame is going to determine how large everything is and it'll let me sort of set up how I want things to go. The last few book nooks I've made have been fairly large, sort of in the vein of like two or three or four or five or six books thick. So this is a really good opportunity to try and make something that is about the same thickness as like a decent book out there. Fortunately, I read a lot of fantasy books and a lot of those books are absurdly thick. Like I have the most recent Brandon Sanderson and it doesn't actually fit on the shelf that this book nook sits on. So it's gonna give me a lot of options as far as making them fairly decently sized. So up to this point, I have mapped out on a fairly thick piece of XPS foam where I want my pillars and columns to be for what will be the bridge leading out to the lava core of the mountain itself. And then I'll start shaving little bits off here and there to make the bridge into that sort of rocky pillar and then once I've got kind of the shape I'm after, I'll spend the next three to four days of my life sanding this and breathing all this dust in and spending most of my time wondering why I haven't just invested in a hot wire cutter. And then just to make the sort of pathway a little bit sharper with some finer edges, I've cut it out of some cardstock, which I'll glue on top. As far as the back roof and sides of the cavern, I need to make sure that I'm using fairly thin foam at this point. So I'm gonna chop off a whole bunch of pieces that are roughly three to five millimeters thick. And then for my stalactites, C for ceiling, G for ground, stalactites. Important lesson you learn in school with that one. I'm just gonna cut out a bunch of randomly sized pieces, which I will shave down to smaller and smaller and pointier pieces and then sort of randomly shape them into what I think look like good lava pillar spike things. Then it's just a case of taking the sides in the back and cutting grooves into it and trying my best not to cut through it at all. I want to keep it as thick as it is but I want to give it a little bit of texture so that when I paint it and dry brush it it really looks like a nice caverny interior. I want to put together as much of the frame as I can so that all the sides have a nice seamless transition into one another, but I also want to still have access to the middle, so I'm going to do everything but the left hand side of the nook. That way I can still work inside of it without having to worry about trying to reach through a small hole or knocking things around. Once I'm happy with where the stalactites are on the ceiling, I can start carving into the foam to give it a little bit more texture. And then just one more double check to make sure that everything lines up properly. I'll glue the second wall in place and then trim it all down to the right size. It gets the exact same texturing scenario with the flat of the blade. And then I'll sort of blend it into the MDF so that it all looks a bit more natural and less like XPS foam on MDF and more like a spooky Mordor cavern. Once I'm happy with that, I will apply a nice thick coat of Orc Sludge Black, which is just black Mod Podge. This is great for strengthening all of the XPS foam as well as giving the paint something to adhere to so that it doesn't soak into the foam as much as if you were just to paint the foam itself. I got a handful of Christmas lights that I want to use as the lava and I need something to both diffuse the light and protect it when I start to put everything together. Enter the acrylic sheet which will be the perfect means to do all of the above. to give my acrylic plate a little bit more texture and to make it a little bit more lava-esque, I'm going to put a fairly thick coat of gel medium over the entire thing. And then once I'm happy with how much I have on there, I'll use another plate to squish down onto it. And then when I pop it off, 
it should give me a fairly awesome looking uh, lava-y, ripple-y water kind of an effect without having to fuss about too much. The painting is a pretty straightforward process on this one. There are, well, there's really one color. It's just gray. You just, you, you, you paint everything gray. So what I do is I go over it with a dark gray and then I mix a great big pot and I just add lighter and lighter bits into that gray until I dry brush my way down to something that I am happy with. And when it comes to dry brushing, I'm generally always happy. Short of adding flock and static grass to something, dry brush is what makes my heart happiest. Then it was just on to measuring the height of that front piece so that I can attach a big old thick old piece of XPS foam onto the front, which will allow me to chop out a nice entryway to Mount Doom. Now, I would like to just comment briefly on the fact that Tolkien created this beautiful, well thought out world universe. I mean, he even made like an entire language in Elvish and you can learn to speak this, like it's a well thought out thing. And he came up with all these beautiful and interesting names. And then he named the mountain Mount Doom. Like he, I don't know, maybe he just ran out of names, but I, I don't know, it just, uh, Mount Doom, really? Anyways, for the lighting, what I opted for was a set of these LED lights. I've had these lying around unused for a while now and they should work pretty perfectly. As you can see, they give off an awful lot of light. The only problem is that there's too much light going through my acrylic sheet, so I need to diffuse it. And the best way to do that is to take some fairly fine grit. I think this is 240 grit sandpaper and lightly sand the back of that. What that'll do is add a nice frosted effect to it so that it's still transparent enough for the light to go through but it's not going to show each individual bulb to quite the same degree. I've got a little bit of this mirror left over from my Minds of Moria book nook, and I'm going to attach that to the bottom so that any of the lights that are pointing downwards will reflect off that and shoot back upwards, which should greatly increase the luminosity of my book nook overall. Then a final stage will be to add a little bit of black dry brush over the edges of the lava acrylic sheet thing, which looks nice against the orange of the lights, and then we're ready to assemble all the pieces. Now I ended up running a couple of lights up the front of the pillar so that it adds kind of a spotlight effect to whatever character is going to be standing over the lava. That way you can see them a little bit more clearly instead of it just being like a black silhouette. Now as far as which characters are going to be in this scene, obviously we're going to have Frodo getting ready to drop the ring in the fire. Sam will be standing on the bridge trying to coax him to do it. And then Gollum will be in the background wondering what hobbit fingers taste like. This dynamic trio is made out of green stuff on a couple thin pieces of wire. And you'll notice that they haven't got any faces and there's a reason for that. And that reason is that we're only gonna see their backs. So I didn't waste any time making faces. I just want them to be somewhat recognizable from the back. So Sam's got his golden locks, Frodo's doing his little ringy thingy, and Gollum is the naked dude wearing a loincloth, so it's hard to screw that one up. And this is specifically why I didn't put the side panel on yet, so that I could glue these guys in place without having to worry about reaching in through that small entryway. And then once Gollum is in place, we are finished, and on to the glamour shots.
As always, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing so that you can continue seeing these things that you like that you saw. I do try to post a new video every week, but depending on the complexity of the video and the project I'm working on, it may take me a little longer every now and again. So if you hit that notification icon, you will know exactly when a new video drops. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.